Welcome! In this introductory video, you'll see how you can manage Dell Storage SC Series Arrays from PowerShell using the Dell Storage PowerShell SDK. First, you'll see how to find, download, and install the PowerShell SDK. Then you'll see a brief demo that provides some basic instructions and tips on how to use it. After that, you'll have enough information to start automating storage tasks in your environment. There are several prerequisites for the PowerShell SDK. First, both PowerShell 4.0 or higher and the .NET Framework 4.5 or higher must be installed. Newer versions of Windows already include the required version of PowerShell, but older versions, like Windows 7, do not. You can use the link shown on the screen to get more information about installing PowerShell 4.0. You can also find the article by searching with the keywords Install PowerShell 4.0. The user account used to log in must also have permission to execute PowerShell scripts. And lastly, you need access to an Enterprise Manager data collector that's installed within your data center. The first thing we'll do is download the PowerShell SDK from the Dell Support website at dell.com support. To find the PowerShell SDK, we'll first click on Product Support. Then we'll click on View Products. We'll click on Servers, Storage, and Networking. Then we'll click on Dell Storage. And then we'll click on Dell Storage SEV2000. Currently, the PowerShell SDK is only linked to the SEV2000 arrays. So even if you're using a different SE series array, like an SE9000, you'll still want to click on one of the SEV2000 arrays. We'll click on Drivers and Downloads. We'll scroll down a little bit and expand Systems Management. And then we'll scroll down some more until we find the PowerShell SDK. There it is right there, so we'll click on Download and then Save. This will download the zip file containing the PowerShell SDK to the Downloads directory. The download is now complete, and we'll click on Open Folder. Since this zip file was downloaded from a website, Windows typically blocks the file as a protection mechanism. We'll want to clear that block before we install the PowerShell SDK. To do that, we'll right-click on the zip file, we'll select Properties, then we'll click on Unblock, and then click OK. That's all that we need to do to unblock the file. Now we're ready to install the PowerShell SDK. The installation process is simply extracting all of the files from the zip file. We'll right-click on the file and select Extract All. And then we'll need to choose an installation directory. It typically works best to use a short name for the installation directory as the full path is required when importing the module in a PowerShell script. We'll click on the Browse button, expand this PC to get to the C drive, then we'll click on Make New Folder, and type in ps underscore sdk as the new folder name. Then we'll click on Extract to extract all the files to the installation directory. The process goes pretty quick and the installation is complete. This is all you need to do to install the PowerShell SDK. There's a separate zip file in this directory containing a bunch of HTML help files. It's a good idea to unzip that file now so that you'll have access to the HTML help files. We'll select the zip file, right click, select Extract All, you can extract the files to a different location other than the default, but the default really works pretty well. Click on the Extract button, and it'll take a little time as there are a lot more files in this particular zip file than there were in the original zip file. The installation of the HTML help files is now complete, so if you want to use them, Scroll down and find the start.html file and open it in your browser.
Before we start using the PowerShell SDK, a word of caution. Keep in mind that the commandlets in this command set are very powerful. The scripts that use them typically use elevated privileges, and some of the actions performed by the commandlets are pretty destructive, so a mistake in a script can really be disastrous. Be careful when using the command set. A great tip, especially if you're just starting with the SDK, is to always send volumes you want to delete to the recycle bin rather than skipping the recycle bin, and then programmatically remove them from the recycle bin. This gives you the opportunity to do a little more verification before the volumes are permanently removed. This demo consists of a PowerShell script that we're going to walk through to give you an idea of how to use the PowerShell SDK. The first thing you'll need to do anytime you want to use the PowerShell SDK is to import the module. And you do that using the import module commandlet. We'll go ahead and highlight the import module command here and go ahead and run it. You'll notice that the installation directory is part of the path there, so that's why we kept it nice and short. If we run get module, we'll see a list of all of the imported modules, and you'll see that the first item in the list is the PowerShell SDK module. The next thing we'll look at is how to get a list of the commandlets that are part of the PowerShell SDK. We'll do that using get command, passing in the PowerShell SDK module using the module parameter. When we run that, we get a long list of commandlets. We also get a couple columns that we really don't care about. Fortunately, we can pipe the output of get command to sort object, and we'll sort on the commandlet name, and then we'll also pipe it into select object so that we only see the name of the commandlet. It's still a long list, but it's much more readable. Get command also has a name parameter, and that parameter accepts wildcards. So we can use this syntax to get all of the commandlets that use the get verb. That will return all of the commandlets that retrieve information from the data collector, as opposed to commandlets that create, modify, or remove things. We can also use the name parameter to find commandlets related to a particular subject area. So we can go ahead and Use the word replication to find all of the commandlets related to replication. We can also use that same strategy with the word volume to find all of the volume commandlets. And then also use that same strategy to find all the replay commandlets. The standard help mechanism within PowerShell also includes help for the commandlets that are part of the PowerShell SDK. We'll use the get del se volume commandlet to see what that looks like. If we run get help without any parameters at all, we'll get kind of an abbreviated help. If we scroll up to the top, we'll see the name of the commandlet, we'll see the synopsis, which provides a description of what the commandlet does, and under syntax, we'll see the name of the commandlet along with all of the parameters and the data types of each of those parameters. If we use the detail parameter, we'll get even more information. We scroll up a little bit, we'll see that each parameter now is separated on its own line and includes a description of that parameter. If you want more information than what's provided with the detail parameter, you can use the full parameter. If we scroll up a little bit, we'll see that there are additional attributes now shown with each parameter. Generally, detailed shows enough information, but if you want to see absolutely everything that's in the help system for that commandlet, use the full parameter. Before we can run any commandlets, we'll need to connect to the data collector. The first thing we'll do is assign some variables that contain the host name, the enterprise manager username, and the password for that user. We'll go ahead and use read host to prompt for the password rather than writing it in the script in clear text. Go ahead and enter the password. Now the variables are all assigned. We're going to create a connection using the connect del API connection commandlet, and we're going to store that connection in a variable called connection. 
we can also create a save connection. And this uses the same commandlet with the same credential parameters, but also includes the save parameter, which is what you use to pass in the name of the save connection. To see a list of save connections, you can use the get del saved API connection commandlet. You can see we have one safe connection and it's named EMDC. To use a connection stored in a variable, you'll use the connection parameter on virtually any commandlet in the PowerShell SDK. In this case, we'll use the get del storage center commandlet. The get del storage center commandlet will show all of the storage centers that are managed by this data collector. You can see that there are two storage centers, SC12 and SC13. To use a save connection, you use the connection name parameter instead of the connection parameter, and you pass in the name of the save connection. You can see we get the same results since we created this name connection using the same host name and credentials. If you don't specify any connection parameters, the default save connection will be used. If we try that, the command that will fail since the save connection that we have is not a default connection. We can change that by making it the default. We'll recreate it using the same name and specify the default parameter. If we look at the list of save connections, we'll see that the default connection attribute is now set to true. When we run get del storage center, it'll succeed and provide the same information as before. We're now ready to start using the PowerShell command set. This particular part of the demo uses a sample script from the Dell Storage PowerShell SDK cookbook. That cookbook is available out on the Dell Tech Center and contains a lot of samples that will help you jumpstart your scripting efforts in your environment. This particular script will create a volume on a storage center, map it to this server, and then format the volume as the T drive. The first thing most scripts will do is specify the error action preference. In this case, if an error is encountered, the script will stop. We'll go ahead and assign some variables. We're going to assign a variable that contains the name of the connection we want to use, and we'll use the connection that we just created. We're also going to specify the storage center on which we want to create the volume. And this is a real important parameter to specify. Since a data collector can manage multiple storage centers, it's really important to specify the storage center that you want to work with. If you don't specify the storage center, the commandlet will run against all storage centers, and depending on what you're doing, the results of that could have negative consequences. We're also going to specify a volume name of demo volume, a size of 110 gigabytes. We'll specify the volume folder in which we want to create the volume. Then we'll specify the server we want to map the volume to and its server folder. And then we'll specify some Windows parameters. We're going to create an MBR disk with an offset of 1 meg. We'll make it the T drive. And format the volume using NTFS with an allocation unit of 64K. Go ahead and assign those variables. Then we'll go ahead and import the module. This session has already imported the module. We'll just go ahead and do it again. It doesn't hurt anything to run it twice. We'll get the storage center object. This will be used when we create the volume. We'll get the volume folder. That'll also be used when we create the volume. Then we'll get the server object that we'll use when we map the volume. Then we'll go ahead and create the volume. Then we'll map the volume to this server. And that's all we need to do with the PowerShell SDK. Now we're going to start using the storage commandlets that Microsoft started providing with Windows 2012. We're going to rescan the disks using the update host storage cache commandlet. Then we're going to get the Windows disk using the serial number of the volume as a filter. We're going to go ahead and check the variable to make sure that we found the disk. Sometimes it takes more than one rescan to find the disk. In this case, it just took the one. Then we'll go ahead and initialize the disk. We'll create a partition 
on the disk, and that'll be with an offset of 1 meg. It'll use the entire disk. Then we'll make that partition the T drive. Then we'll format the volume with NTFS using an allocation unit of 64K. And then we'll make the label the same as the volume name in the storage center. And that's all we needed to do. We can go to the Windows Explorer, and we now have a T drive that we can use for files or whatever we want to do. And that's the end of the demo. In this video, you've seen how to download and install the Dell Storage PowerShell SDK, as well as some basic instructions on how to use it. You can now use that information to start managing SC series arrays in your data center using PowerShell. For more videos and white papers to help you get the most from your Dell Storage arrays, including the Dell Storage PowerShell SDK Cookbook, visit the Dell Tech Center at www.delltechcenter.com. Thanks for watching.